Hello best learners, this is Mustafa here at Learn With The Best, and today we're going to be looking at Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power. Law number 7, get others to do the work for you, but always take the credit. In this video, I'm going to define the law for you, then I'll read an old fable that perfectly encapsulates the law. And then I'll give you an example from my own life where I use this law to my advantage. Here's the law. Use the wisdom, knowledge, and legwork of other people to further your own cause. Not only will such assistance save you valuable time and energy, it will also give you a godlike aura of efficiency and speed. In the end, your helpers will be forgotten and you will be remembered. Never do yourself what others can do for you. Okay, so once upon a time, on one pleasant day, the tortoise met the elephant, who trumpeted. Out of my way, you weakling! I may step on you! The tortoise was not afraid and stayed where he was, so the elephant stepped on him but could not crush him. Do not boast, Mr. Elephant! I am as strong as you are, said the tortoise. But the elephant just laughed, and so the tortoise asked him to come to his hill the next morning. The next day, before sunrise, the tortoise ran down the hill to the river where he met the hippo, who was just on his way back into the water after his nocturnal feeding. Mr. Hippo, shall we have a tug of war? I bet I'm as strong as you are, said the tortoise. The hippo laughed at this ridiculous idea, but agreed. The tortoise produced a long rope and told the hippo to hold it in his mouth until the tortoise would shout, Hey! Then the tortoise ran back up the hill where he found the elephant who was getting impatient. He gave the elephant the other end of the rope and said, When I say hey, pull, and you'll see which one of us is strongest. Then he ran halfway back up the hill to a place where he couldn't be seen, and he shouted, Hey! The elephant and the hippo pulled and pulled, but neither could budge the other. They were of equal strength. They both agreed that the tortoise was as strong as they were. <laughs> so the moral of this story is to never do what others can do for you. The tortoise let others do the work for him while he got the credit. Mm, how very devious. <laughs> now, let's look at an example from my past where I used this law. But before we do that, I need your help with YouTube's algorithm. Please smash that thumbs up button below. Because if you don't, then YouTube is simply not going to show this video to anyone else. And that would be a crying shame, don't you think? Please also subscribe and click on the bell icon. Because if you don't, then again, YouTube won't let you know when a new video is uploaded. And if you want to transform yourself from a lamb to a lion, then check out my course pinned in the top comment below. I will teach you the tools that you need for success, but you have to actually step up and put in the work on yourself. This course is not for everyone, because the majority of the population are sheep. But for those very few of us who do want to walk the path of a lion, this is the course for you. Okay, so once upon a time, in one of my old jobs, my manager was going on maternity leave for 12 weeks and she chose me to be the interim manager for our small team while she was gone. I knew right away that if I was going to survive those 12 weeks, I would need to make some changes on our team. There were 6 permanent employees and 2 temps. Two of the permanent employees were women in their 60s who had both been in our particular industry for over 30 years at that point. They always wanted to climb the ladder, but they were simply not good enough. And here I was, a much younger man at 31 years old. I knew these two were not going to enjoy having me as their manager, and I knew that they would do whatever they could to make my life miserable. I had to get rid of these two demons. One of them actually left on her own, 
She was so infuriated by the idea of me being her manager and she just could not handle it. So she resigned from the company. But before she resigned, she made sure to let the branch manager know that she thought poorly of me and that I was not well suited for the manager position. And the other woman in her 60s, she actually screamed at me after she found out that I would be the interim manager. She was yelling at me, asking me if I knew what I was doing, and if I had ever done this or that. You know, she basically started interviewing me at the top of her lungs for the entire office to hear. So, what did I do? I saw this as an opportunity. I played along and I answered all of her questions, calmly, all the while knowing that I would just take this incident to HR and have her fired. It was the perfect plan, and that's exactly what I did. After it was over, I took the incident to HR, and I had her fired. So now, at the start of my time as manager, I did not have six full-time employees anymore. I only had four. But remember, I also did have those two temps. And this was a pretty solid team. Everyone got along here pretty well, but just because we got along well, it does not mean that I could so easily get these people to do more work than what they were used to doing on a daily basis. It's difficult to delegate to people who are content with their daily work routines. They're hamsters on a wheel, right? They expect to do their daily routine all day, every day, and at the end of the week, they get their little bits of cheese. So now I'm in this precarious position and it dawns on me. My manager is on maternity leave and my branch manager knows that I'm shorthanded. It takes, for example, three parts to make a widget. Parts A, B, and C. And per state law, only full-time employees are allowed to complete all three tasks, while our temporary workers are only allowed to complete parts A and B. So the moment of truth, I decided I would have the temps doing menial work and I would have one of them focus solely on task A, while the other focused solely on task B, while I would do the final part, part C. So it was sort of an assembly line that I'd created. In our computer system though, the person who completes part C of the project gets the credit for the entire project. So now, all of a sudden, I was managing the entire team while also completing all of these projects. Or so it appeared. My branch manager was very happy with our results. Why did I succeed so well, you may ask? Well, it's because I had two temps doing the bulk of the work and I took credit for it while also taking credit for managing the team. And how did I take credit? It was not by telling everyone, Oh hey, you know what? I completed 300 projects this month, while red-headed Susie over there only completed 100. No, I didn't say a word. Not a single word. I knew the system tracked everything, and so I let the numbers do the talking for me. When the branch manager asked me how I was doing so well, I just told him that it was because I had a great team which was 100% true. But I knew that he had all of the numbers and he wasn't going to say anything and I wasn't going to say anything either. He gave me a nice raise and a bonus and we were both happy. So how do you wield this law to your advantage? It greatly depends on the situation you're in, but you should try to find ways in which you can get other people to do the work that needs to get done and then don't squander the extra time that you are left with. And you have to do this in a smart and respectful way. If you don't have authority over others and you try to go around telling people what to do, they're not going to take that very kindly. So just think about what situation you're in and strategize and plan depending on your circumstances. Okay, I think we should end the video here. If you like my YouTube content and you want to support me and the creation of even more content, then please check out my Patreon link in the description below. I upload new videos every Friday for my Patreon subscribers that go deeper into the 48 Laws of Power. 
These videos are a bit more raw and untamed than my usual videos here on YouTube. And if you're a patron of mine already, then I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because it's people like you who truly make all of this even possible in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this animated video on Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power. Law number 7. Get others to do the work for you, but always take the credit. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.